All right, we're back in action here. It took a little time off this summer, uh, but I've got a small project here on the uh, 98K1500. This is pretty much my plow truck at this point. At the end of last year, it began to run really poorly. The symptoms were that on a cold start, I'd put it in gear, the engine would stall. Uh, to get it started again, I'd pretty much have to open the throttle all the way as though it were flooded. Uh, and then when it was running to warm up, uh, the engine would race up and then back down to a stall or close to a stall. I'd have to give it some gas to, to uh, keep it running. Um, so last week, we're now in mid-August, I'm trying to be proactive. Uh, I hooked it up to my MaxLink scanner, which I'll link to down below. Uh, I've done a review on this scanner, it's awesome. Despite not having a check engine light, it pulled a pending code telling me that the engine coolant temperature was low. So the engine coolant temperature sensor was giving the computer bad information. And incidentally, this sensor is not the uh, thermostat that drives your, your gauge on your dash. This is the sensor that feeds the uh, computer the engine temperature information so that it can adjust the timing and fuel delivery based on the temperature of the engine. Okay, I then took a small hammer and gently tapped on the sensor, and sure enough, the engine would react to those taps. So we're going to try changing this out and see if we can smooth this engine out. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, before we uh, change out the uh, sensor, the ECT sensor, I guess we'll just call it that um, from this point forward, engine coolant temperature. We're going to go to live data here on the uh, MaxLink ML629 by Autel. I'll link to this product down below as well as the review I've done on it because uh, I love it. It's coming so handy already. So the ECT right there reading a negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's not right for sure, right? This is Maine, but it's not that cold yet. It's mid-August, right? So uh, let's go back and just take a look and see what we're seeing for codes. Let's go to the stored codes. Okay, so we have the engine coolant temperature and we also have an EGR code. Okay, so the uh, EGR sensor is also throwing a code which it wasn't last week so that's new uh, but it is entirely possible that the EGR code uh, is being caused by misinformation being fed to the computer by the ECT. So let's go ahead and change that out and we may have to uh, adjust the EGR valve in a future video. Alright, let's uh, see if we can get this swapped out. Alright, so on this GM Vortec 350 the um, ECT a sensor is right here and most of them will be in the same general area as where your radiator uh, hose runs into your engine where your thermostat is located okay we'll zoom in on that here in just a minute but uh, on the new one I wrapped a little bit of Teflon even though there was already some thread sealant on here this is a Delphi and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some dielectric grease uh, you might as well buy a big tube of this if you buy it at the store uh, say at the auto parts store, they'll have a little packet, a one-time use packet. You can buy it like this for six bucks, or you can buy a little one-time use packet for like 95 cents or something, so they kill you on that stuff. I'm just going to take a Q-tip and uh, run some of that dielectric grease down on these contacts here, okay? You'll see that when we take the other one out, they're really rusted. I was thinking that was what was causing the issue, so I actually tried to clean them up and put some... Um, some contact cleaner down on it but clearly it didn't work so let me get some uh, dielectric grease down on these contacts and then I'll zoom in we're gonna use a three quarter inch uh, socket and it, and it uh, a deep well will fit right down whoops go this way fits right down over the connection okay so it should be quick and painless you wanna you wanna catch pan because we will likely lose some uh, antifreeze all right Alright, we'll uh, start by removing the electrical connector, okay, and hopefully we can get some of this. You'll see that there's, on this particular one, there's a little tab. We need to lift that up and then pull the connector off. If it hasn't been removed in a while, it might come off uh, a little bit more difficult than this one because I've already had it off, um, but don't pull on the wire, okay? Just set that out of the way. And again, we do have a catch pan uh, down below. Again, on this particular one, it's a three-quarter inch. And I'm going to use a half inch ratchet, and it's a deep well socket, so we can get it down on there. And my arm's right in the way here. So people have indicated uh, that having links to the parts and tools that I've used in the videos 
is helpful. As a matter of fact, um, people have asked on older videos for me to post links to the parts. Um, so I'm going to continue to do that. Hopefully that is helpful. Uh, I put it in the comment section as well as in the uh, description. Alright, we didn't lose hardly any coolant here. Alright, that's what the old one looks like. Wind the new one in. So this is really quick and painless. Um, but I thought this would kind of get me back into the habit of doing videos here. I usually take a few weeks off in the summer anyways when I kind of take a break from it. Um, I never stop doing projects. I've had plenty of projects. I just haven't posted any videos about them. So anytime you're threading something in, um, obviously try to get it started by hand so that you're not going to cross thread it or break anything. Um, obviously this one's got the, uh, the thread sealant and a little bit of Teflon on it so it's you know, a little harder to start by hand, but, and I'm just going to look at it because I'm going to try to position that tab in the same spot, which is toward the top, just like that, okay? Let's hook it up, and hopefully this video has been helpful. I know it really uh, was a quick one. That's all right. If it helps somebody out, it's worth it. What I'm going to do is actually uh, start the vehicle. Put it in the uh, live read mode and to see if we're reading something that's not a negative number. All right. Thanks for watching. Give me that thumbs up if you did find it helpful. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there in the lower right. Uh, leave questions and comments below. And uh, keep watching. I'll post more here soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.